With the cross country season fast approaching, in today's video we're going to be covering Jakob Ingebrigtsen's current training as he prepares for the cross country season to try and defend his European title and perhaps go one step better. Well, to begin with, Jakob's training is totally different in the winter than in the summer. I'll be going over all of the details, but one thing I want you guys to do is hit that subscribe button if you are new to this channel, as I'll be covering all of the races and latest running news from the world of distance running. Firstly, let's start with Jakob's workout structures. Now, it's really bizarre because Jakob doesn't train like most elite runners. He actually does something really unusual when it comes to his workout days. So Jakob will actually run two hard workouts during the week, okay, but they will be in the same day. He will do that twice. So for example, he'll take a Tuesday as a workout day. He'll do a workout Tuesday morning and another workout Tuesday evening. Then Thursday or Friday will be his workout day again, and he'll do a workout in the morning of Thursday and a workout in the evening. So this is two sessions within the same 24 hours, one in the morning, then one in the evening. So this is completely unique and different, and I only found out about this recently since I've been researching Jakob Ingebrigtsen's training. It's very unusual because a lot of Kenyans, a lot of Ethiopians don't follow this method, but it seems to be working. Most of the time, Jakob will be training with his older brothers, Henrik and Philip, but next we're going to be going into the details of what these sessions actually are. So in Jakob's cross country training, his workout examples are as follows. Firstly, we have 5 times 8 minutes at threshold with 60 seconds jog recovery. Then we have 24 times 400 meters at threshold with him slowly getting faster and faster each rep until the last couple are around 61 to 62 seconds. Then we have 8 times 1 kilometer also at threshold. All of the recoveries of these workouts are floating jogs between 60 and 90 seconds. This is threshold training, and I'm also going to be going over what Jakob Ingebrigtsen's pace is for threshold in the next part of today's video. Now these sessions can be anything that is simple, or it can be anything that is confusing as hell. So these three workouts I just listed will be classed as simple workouts. If your coach came to you and said, hey, we got 5 800s today, 60 seconds recovery, but... A complicated workout would be something like a pyramid workout where you actually change the distance or the time of the rep halfway through the session. So Jacob's threshold details are as follows. Jacob's threshold has been predicted to be between 425 per mile and 429 per mile, but it's suspected that he actually may be running these reps a tiny bit faster towards the end and a bit slower towards the beginning as this allows his legs to warm up properly and prevent injury. Sessions normally with Philip and Henrik, his two older brothers, and they also tend to have a pace cyclist. Now these sessions can be performed on the track, road, and even fields, and also sometimes even hilly mixed terrain to stimulate cross-country race environment. So these threshold reps are fast, like 425 per mile, you're not really going to find anyone who can race a cross-country race faster than that especially if it's muddy and wet. Usually, the average pace for a European champion would be around 438, maybe 435, and on a very, very wet, rainy and muddy day, you'd even be looking at 450s, 453s, depending on how hilly the course actually is. So, Jakob training is currently underway for the cross-country season, I'm not too sure if the World Champs is actually on this year, as for some reason they seem to change how it works every other year. It used to be that the World Cross Country Champs was every 3 years, then it went every 4 years, then for a while they went every year, and now I think they're going every other year. No idea why they keep changing this, maybe it's something to do with the organisation skills. Um, yeah, it's kind of annoying because I wish it was every year. Hopefully it will be this year and we'll, I'll definitely cover that race so hit subscribe and join the channel but Jakob is definitely in preparations 
I believe that the European Champs is too easy for him now. I mean, he is challenged, don't get me wrong, especially in the senior men's race. But I believe he's actually looking to win the world title. Now, Jacob Kiplimo won the world, the world title in Australia, the last one. Is Jakob fast enough to beat Jacob? Maybe not. But I reckon he could at least try. And by running his sessions at 425 per mile and doing hill reps and threshold sessions, he is definitely preparing himself in the best way possible to beat Kiplimo. Also, there's a chance, guys, that Kiplimo won't even be in the race. Joshua Chetakai might not be in the race, so it's anyone's game. All they can do is train as hard as they possibly can, stay injury-free, keep their sleep right, eat a good, balanced, nutritious diet, and just really get their mind and their head in the right place. Now, one thing I have to also point out is that Jakob Ingeriksen does a hell of a lot of mileage, okay? He used to do only 70 to 80 when he was around 17 or 18 years old. But as of current, it's been predicted that he is running up to 130 miles per week. That's no joke, and it tells me that he is serious in going into and progressing in these longer distances. Firstly, if you're running 130 miles a week injury-free, then that's going to set you up perfectly to have a massive endurance and VO2 max engine to be able to keep up with some of these Africans at the World Champs. Now, in 2019, Jakob tried to do that. He managed to hang with them until around the halfway mark, but they kept surging and they were running so aggressively that they managed to basically just break him down. Oh, God, it was such a fun race to watch, guys. I literally can't even say that. It's one of my favorite races was the World Champs where Jakob collapses after the finish line. That famous kind of, you know, he sinks into the ground. He's given everything. I've never seen him ever do something like that after a European Champs because he's never really been pushed that hard before. One thing I'm looking forward to is how Jakob decides to run these races. Granted, he's running 130 miles per week. He's doing, well, technically four sessions per week. So a Tuesday and a Thursday, two sessions within one day. And the rest of the days are treadmill running, easy running, plyometrics, some strengthening in the gym. It's very light though. A cross-country runner wouldn't lift very, very heavy weights because they could risk injury. And obviously their goal isn't to get hench and big muscles as big muscles do actually slow you down and make you worse at distance running. To be a good distance runner, you have to be as lean and light as possible while still staying fit and obviously not malnourished. These athletes are in no means uh, calorie controlled or diets or anything like that. They're, these guys are eating between three and 6,000 calories a day, but because they're running sometimes up to 18 to 22 miles a day, they look like they are calorie uh, counting. So you have to remember, guys, that to be a good distance runner like Jakob, you never want to lift heavy bench press, or if you're going to do leg workouts or squats in the gym, then it's very, very important that you don't go too heavy or risk, uh, you know, injury or something like that. Jakob Ingebrigtsen is going to probably be looking to run races very aggressively at the European Champs, but I feel like at the World Champs, he will take the back foot. And I believe he will observe the race. He'll go out on the first 400 and let some of the other Africans take the lead. And he'll see how he feels. Maybe he can come away with a win. Maybe he can come away with a medal. That would still be good. Jakob won't be doing as much speed in the winter months as he does in the summer. And really he won't be doing any track sessions in terms of pace specificness. So what does this mean? It basically means that he's not going to train as much on the track as he does in summer because it's not necessary unless he plans to do some indoor track races which I think are pretty pointless and irrelevant because no one really cares about indoor track so I think the cross country season should be his number one priority. What does this mean? Well, a lot of his sessions will be done around lakes, on fields, up and down hills, on woodland trails, gravel paths, dirt paths, etc. So I'm assuming you guys get the idea of how his training and terrain completely changes along with the season. Now this is important for one very, very, very critical reason, and that is the fact that if he just trained on track for all these threshold sessions, then the, the hills would just destroy him. His legs wouldn't be ready for it. Whereas now he's runs some of these threshold efforts on the hilly sections of fields and forests around him. 
it allows his body to adapt to running on different terrains that are muddy, wet, slippery, have loose gravel and stones, and also, obviously the most important, have heels. Now, if he does a threshold session on the hilly routes, obviously his paces will slow and he will then start to run based off of feel more. But if you ever do a threshold session on a difficult course, then you can maybe drop 10 seconds per mile or maybe even 20 depending on how difficult the course is and that will be your new threshold pace obviously you can do it the rookie way the rookie way of running a threshold session on a difficult course or loop would be to actually run at what you think is your one hour race pace now this is quite hard to tell because no one can really truly predict how fast they can run for a whole hour you know, it's like, oh, can you run at this pace for one hour and then drop dead on the 60th minute? Well, no one really knows. You know, it's difficult to tell. It's usually judged off of paces, which is why doing threshold sessions on hilly routes can be difficult. The only way Jakob really gets around this problem is by knowing his data, knowing his stats of what his heart rate is and what his lactate levels are. Now, you would have seen this if you've seen any of the documentaries, Team Inga Brixen, that he is a massive fan of lactate level testers, and he also does VO2 max testers and threshold tests. So, Jakob will know all of his paces, and take for example, if the course is hilly, then he will simply go off of his heart rate, or he will take a lactate test every rep. This will allow him to get more of a feel. If his lactate levels are too high after the first rep when they do the test, then he will slower the pace for the second rep. Or if it's too low, then he will increase the pace. So there's two ways that he go about training a threshold pace. It's either by feel and tests, or it's simply by pace and GPS. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, giving a brief kind of overview of how Jakob Ingebrigtsen trains for the cross country season. Obviously, there are a whole bunch of other things that I've left out of today's video, like his recovery, his diet, and there are a whole bunch of other things like foam rolling, mentality, loads and loads of things that I could make two hour long videos about. Maybe I'll make a video on his diet next. If you guys want to see that, hit subscribe and drop a like and comment down below that you want to see a video on his diet as it's very controversial many people have said that he eats mcdonald's very regularly and eats a lot of junk food so maybe i'll do a bit of research on that and clear up some of the myths around his diet and actually get to the bottom of what it really is so you guys thanks for watching today's video this is the runner make sure you drop a like before you leave and subscribe if this is your first time here to stay up to date with all the latest running news and races peace out